All right, so we're going to do a little recap on the terrain sculpting video. Some people had some questions about all that that thought it was interesting, but weren't sure why you would use that over, say, a, a terrain generator. There's no particular reason why you may necessarily use it over a terrain generator. If terrain generators do what you need it to do, you would use that. They're faster, they're quicker usually, so of course you would want to use that. However, um, this is kind of a example of what that video is about. It's about the fundamentals about being able to sculpt terrain because you might end up creating things like this right here. And what you would do is you'd, you'd use an add-on like GrabDoc to um, do grabs of these, of the height, right? So you'll create height maps or alphas. You can use those to continue to sculpt with. So if you wanted to do everything manually, at a certain point, you're building like a system. So think of like low level going to a high level. And so uh, just one alpha will do a number of things that, right? So um, you would generate something like that using the grab doc add-on. Made videos about this in the past, but add-on's free, so definitely get it. And then um, eventually you might do something like that, and then you can use that alpha to make uh, other stuff. Stuff like this if you need to. I ran through all this pretty quick just for this video, but we go ahead and take a look at um, a new scene here. Go through the, kind of the workflow with that. I'm going to do a uh, plane and just subdivide it a couple times here. Okay, and then uh, do a multi resolution on it real quick, just subdivide it. Okay, get it up to about a million for this. Might want to shade it smooth as well. But when you go into sculpt mode now, you can use something like Sculpt Alphas Manager. You export those alphas out to a folder. Um, in the Alphas Manager add-on, under its preferences, you go and point it to those folders, right? The master folder, and it'll load up these subfolders. So things like rock or terrain, in this case. This is one of those that I've made, so I'm going to switch it to area. We're going to do stroke anchored, and now uh, I can adjust the, the strength here with Shift-F or whatever, but uh, I can go ahead and lay those out super fast. And so what ends up happening is that um we can use these as building blocks we don't have to keep sculpting everything uh, but there are times you might want to do this specifically here in blender transferring this to a game engine what ends up happening is you end up having to create um, your height map basically for your environment or whatever uh, however you could take these into some game engines and actually use them inside the game engine as well so that's always beneficial Something like Unity's Terrain Tools, they already have that set up. They actually have scan data, so you can use GIS satellite information. And that GIS satellite information will be um, a little bit more accurate than your scopes for sure. But it ends up not looking too much different by the end of it. Right? So that alpha there just happened to be unaligned. It wasn't centered, so it was a little hard to work with. But... You see, you just like scale up or down or whatever the case, right? And so with that in mind, you can also use the other one you created, just two of these, right? And you can draw like that, create some spurs, whatever the case, run around and get this going in this kind of a manner, okay? So you can work it out pretty quick, right? It's a little better than that, though, because... Um, if you ever look at a rock up close with just the right kind of lighting, it'll look like a mountain range or a cliff, whatever. And so, um, but in nature, a lot of things are very fractal, right? And because of that, uh, I went out to a um, went out to a um, valley and um, or actually a canyon. Sorry, not a valley. Um, I took some photos. This is one of those photos that I just turned black and white and blew out the contrast back and forth, right? And so I could take this, I could still use this to create some interest on these kinds of things as well. So it doesn't have to necessarily be photo scans or anything like that, um, but you can still utilize things like that. So anything you find online for the most part will also work. So you can get some nice interesting runs and stuff like that going. But these are actual scans down here. and um, See with these scans, I was to use them like so. They look a little bit nicer perhaps than my photo there, but they're not too much, they're not too dissimilar. 
right? So you can use actual scan data if you can. If you want to look around online, there's people that sell those. Uh, you can certainly put them to use. Probably don't want to smooth. But that tends to create a little kind of a bulge there, right? So you know, you you work your terrain out, figure out what you need, what you don't need. You can always do something like the field tool as well and use something like sand to uh, kind of fill in areas and create a little interesting texture as you work on the uh, filling in some of those little areas, those little line areas, things like that, right? Okay. And so there's a lot of different ways you can create terrain, but it's kind of up to you on what you think would be most appropriate. I personally find that... Um, Depending on the level size and everything I need out of the level, sometimes it's quicker just to sculpt it than it is to even to mess around with um, terrain generator sometimes. Keep that in mind. But if you need like background elements, you know, you got something like this going on, uh, you just need some background elements. This works fine. This is not going to be like playable area. This church is more important. So. Um, that may work. Now, if you're going to actually, whoop, lost everything. Where'd it go? Looking. All right. Let's say we were actually um, down in this area. If you hold, uh, if you hit shift tilde key and then hit space bar, you can actually kind of like teleport around on your turn. You see, if this was something I had to hike through and made some rocks like this, this might be quite useful as well. This is going to bring that that detail level up. Of course, these would get more detail than the other half of the terrain. But a lot of game engines, the terrain systems automatically load. So you would have to focus on these little small sections like this a little bit more than, um, than perhaps uh, the terrain itself. So definitely something you can consider doing. And so that's just kind of the recap of this whole thing here. We found it a little bit interesting. Get a better idea of um, what you can do when it comes to sculpting terrain. Right? Because you can certainly pull this into a game engine if you needed to. But it's going to probably more or less be one single tile. If you had uh, multiple tiles of terrain in the game engine, you know, you're probably going to have to do a bigger sculpt here in Blender. If your system can't handle it, it's not a good idea. So it's best to always try to use the, the tools inside of the, uh, the game engine if possible. Just a quick little uh, tip here as well. If you take a look at, um, I think it was a GDC talk by Ubisoft. It was Ghost Recon Wildlands. The terrain system they had set up for that. If you if you go watch what they did there, it has a lot of cool tools that are procedural, semi-procedural inside of the, the uh, game engine itself. And that allows them to also populate these things with either cliff rocks or animals or vegetation at the same time. But if you don't have that kind of a system, or you don't have the option to buy those kind of tools for a game engine, well then you're going to have to rely on just uh, kind of these older techniques here. So, And then also, you know, terrain generators cost money as well usually. Okay, so you got to keep that in the back of your mind as well. Is it really worth it if you can just make a couple things real quick and then half a day have something like this already pretty much ready to go where you can take it into substance and then you can do the uh, the color mask for the different terrain um, materials and stuff. Create your color mask inside a substance. You can export that out, load up your materials in the game engine, and have at it, right? Um, it's also known as a splat map in Unity, just so you know. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to talk about it real quick, and hopefully you enjoyed. I'll check you out in the next one, all right? Take care.